This is part four of the American Legal System PowerPoint audio lecture series. And this edition is in regards to court systems. Every sovereign has a court system. So in the United States, there are two parallel court systems, the federal court system and the state court system. Each of these systems has a trial court level and at least one level of appellate courts. And before you ask, yes, you can be sued or charged with a crime in both the federal and state court systems regarding the same subject matter. Trial courts. Trial courts are the entry level courts, as it were. These are the only place where facts are heard by the court. So it's the only place where evidence is presented. Trial courts have different names in different jurisdictions. Federally, the trial court is called the district court. The one in Vermont is the United States District Court for the District of Vermont. Larger states may have a a number of federal district courts. So for example, the U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of New York, or the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of California. In the federal courts, the intervening appellate level court is called the Circuit Courts of Appeal. We'll get to those in a minute. And the highest court is the U.S. Supreme Court. So in Vermont, we call our trial courts the Superior Court. That's kind of funny because they're not superior to anything. However, there used to be a system in Vermont where there were two different types of trial courts, district courts for smaller matters and superior court for larger matters like felony cases or civil trials over a certain dollar amount. A couple of years ago, they simplified the Vermont court system and all of the trial courts are now called the Superior Court. Again, facts are only heard at the trial level. Any subsequent appeals are on issues of law only. We mentioned jurisdiction in an earlier lecture relative to sovereignty because it's a, it's a similar concept, but in order for a court to hear a civil or criminal case, it must have jurisdiction or the legal authority over the subject matter of the case and or the people involved in the case. Subject matter jurisdiction involves the nature of the argument in the case, what's at dispute, what the dollar amounts are. For example, a probate court won't hear a uh, lawsuit about a business purchase, a bankruptcy court won't hear a criminal conspiracy case and a Vermont court won't hold a trial about a convenience store robbery in Kansas. So I've posted up an information sheet um, regarding the federal court system, and it sets out some of the differences in jurisdiction between federal and state courts. Personal jurisdiction involves the location of the incident involved and where the people live or the business at issue is located. Many jurisdictions have specialized trial courts like traffic court, drug court, family court, probate court, housing court. This allows the judges and clerks to specialize and become more efficient at what they do. A general court that hears a cocaine case in the morning and then a divorce and then an eviction and then a traffic ticket all in one day or one morning or one hour may well not handle each as well as a specialty court, and the judge may not have the understanding of the unique issues or possible resolutions available in each situation. Every jurisdiction has at least one appellate court level. Like trial courts, these have different names depending on the jurisdiction. The federal system calls these circuit courts of appeal. And they're called circuit courts because back in the day, the appellate court justice used to get on his horse and ride from state to state and hear the appeals on a circuit. 
Now, of course, we have great big courthouses and no one's riding their horse from court to court. Uh, Vermont and New York are in the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. That courthouse is in Manhattan. And Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Maine are in the First Circuit Court of Appeals, which is located in Boston. Remember that trial courts are the only venue where a judge or jury hears evidence and determines the facts. Appeals are based on arguments alleging that there were errors at the trial court level, that the judge made a mistake in how he or she managed the trial, which evidence was admitted, and what rulings were made on questions of law. Each jurisdiction has at least one court of last resort, or a highest court. In the federal court system, this is the U.S. Supreme Court, which has nine justices. And those justices are appointed by the president uh, with the advice and consent, as they say, of the U.S. Senate. In Vermont, it is also called the Vermont Supreme Court. But be aware that other states' highest courts have different names. In New York, quite confusingly, their highest court is called the Court of Appeals while the intermediate appeals courts are called Supreme Courts. In Massachusetts, that highest court is the Supreme Judicial Court, or SJC. But here's an interesting twist for you. In the Vermont court system, there is no intermediate level of appeals court. An appeal from a judgment at the trial level, any of the Vermont Superior Courts, goes directly to the Vermont Supreme Court. Remember that we earlier mentioned the idea of precedent or stare decisis. A ruling of a court establishes judicial law, also called common law, and a court ruling establishes precedent. Lawyers use the Latin phrase precedent, which literally means the thing decided. Circuit splits. So because of the rule of precedent, when you have uh, appeals courts with different jurisdictions, then you can have different law in different jurisdictions. So a court decision is the law of the land that only applies in the jurisdiction of that particular court. In our federal court system, it is quite often the case that one circuit court of appeals decides one way while a different circuit court of appeals decides another way. This is called a circuit split, and it means that yes, in different parts of the United States, federal law may well be quite different. An example, once again, would be same gender marriage, where some uh, circuit courts of appeal ruled that US equal protection clauses held that people of the same gender could legally marry, and other circuits held that that was not the correct interpretation. Circuit splits are resolved only when or if the US Supreme Court takes a case on that legal question and decides it once and for all for the jurisdiction of the entire United States. We mentioned that appeals in Vermont go right to the Vermont Supreme Court and that in uh, each state, once you get through their appellate courts, you can go to their highest court. You can appeal on to their highest court. The US Supreme Court works a little bit differently. There are very few cases that can definitely and absolutely go straight to the US Supreme Court on an appeal. There are three routes for cases to get to the U.S. Supreme Court. The very least common is that of original jurisdiction. The Supreme Court has original exclusive jurisdiction, that is, they act like a trial court, between disputes between different states, something like a boundary dispute. In fact, there was a case in the U.S. Supreme Court in 1998 with New York and New Jersey suing one another 
over the question of who has jurisdiction over Ellis Island. The most common way that uh, cases get to uh, the U.S. Supreme Court is an appeal on petition for writ of certiorari. So to get to the Vermont Supreme Court, you would just file your appeal. In the U.S. Supreme Court, you have to ask for permission to appeal to them. And that request for permission is a petition for writ of certiorari. So a party seeking to appeal a decision of one of the circuit courts of appeals files a petition for a writ of certiorari. And unlike all the other federal courts, the Supreme Court has the discretion to decide which cases it will hear. They get thousands of petitions every year for certiorari and only issue a writ of certiorari. That is, they only take a very small number of those cases, usually when there is a circuit split on a very important issue that they want to decide for the whole country. And the last way of getting to the Supreme Court is an appeal from a decision of a state Supreme Court. So this is an, uh, probably uh, in between the other two in terms of its commonness. They take uh, you know, several of these a year. Each state has its own Supreme Court that is final authority on state law. Uh, the Supreme Court generally won't challenge a state court ruling on its issues of state law unless the question is, does the state law violate the U.S. Constitution? So once you actually get in court, how does the litigation process work? That will be the subject of the next PowerPoint audio lecture.